right, where are we going today? Oh, I've got this great place on the Yuzian Ocean. Oh, hey, all right. Free satellites. It's, it's, it's got some, uh, yeah. It's got some good sights and uh, free cable. <laughs> I mean, we we say cable. It's it's an easy shorthand. It's it's future XM satellite TV. The Su-37 did us pretty well in those last few missions, and so did the F-22 for like one mission, I think, maybe two. We're not going to touch any of these uh, Newcom planes because we have the Su-43, so we have basically no reason to use any plane that came before it. Not even the R-211, which I think we unlocked at the exact same time, but the game didn't give us a message about it. Because why would it? Look at that thing's uh, Pentagon graph, man. That is just bonkers. Yeah, it really seems like it's just pushing the limits of what a plane could do. It's like the best possible, uh, like normal plane. In fact, I think it is the best possible, like actual plane that exists, or there's a variant of it existing. The best thing about the Su-43, is the 43 in this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. hey, the best thing about it in this is that it is super mobile. Like, it is so agile. It turns so good. If you miss something, you just turn on a fucking dime. Holy. Well, I mean, this thing is basically all fins, so I guess that makes sense. It's uh, the second of the regular planes that. Well, maybe it was the first. No, it's the first of the regular planes that can break Mark IV. This design. That's, uh, that's pretty zippy. And yeah, it's just so good. Like it's, unless you have been, unless you like play and feel for yourself how quickly it's turning, it's kind of hard to properly uh, express it. But this well, is like the uh, first of, this is like the first of the end games, end game planes. Right. Well, I mean, we're, we're, uh, recording, you know, these, these two episodes kind of back to back here and, uh, Man, just just based on uh, the last video, uh, the the what was it, Su twenty one that we uh, were 30, in? thirty seven, thirty seven. Um, it feels positively sluggish. Like it's it's crazy how responsive this thing looks. Yeah, and like this thing is so good and so fast that I've been able to, like the whole point of this mission is destroy the convoys before they get to the satellite. If you don't destroy them in time, fail the mission. But I also need to destroy a certain number of planes to get an A rank. There's 43 just goes everywhere and does it all. You could take this through the rest of the game if you wanted to. And yet, would you believe, there will be better planes than this. After a certain point, you know, if a, if a plane gets much more responsive than this, it, it seems like it would be harder to control. Interesting that you should say that. But anyway, there's another general resource squadron. It's approaching, quote, at speed. So that means we've got, like, at least one minute to destroy more planes. Well, I mean, that's that's some kind of speed, I suppose. <laughs> it is a non-zero rate of movement. <laughs> oh, I think, like, there's also... In the Japanese version, there's a requirement to not let your friendly targets that are approaching the satellite to recover it themselves. They can't be destroyed by planes that are en route to destroy them. Gun kill. Um, but I don't think that that requirement exists in this game. You can, they can just fly around, it's only the targets that matter and the satellite uh, being captured by the enemy. Mm-hmm. Ah, oh, poor hydrofoils. Uh -huh. 
So does uh, does this plane have any other options for uh, for the missile slot, or are we still with the uh, the regular ones? We're still with regular missiles, uh, but because the plane is so much more mobile that it, uh, I'm okay with it. I don't believe oh, it had okay. short range. If it had short range missiles, I would have taken them because I always prefer those because you get more of them. Um, it also had the Merv if you wanted to be an idiot. <laughs> Oh, like, man. Have, have you ever have you ever used the Merv in any of the Ace Combats you've played? Um, you know, not that I can recall. Yeah, no, I think no, I what, nobody the... does. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's it's not the uh, the guided missile, therefore useless. Ah, oh, that plane is so cool. And amazingly, I'm pretty sure this is the only mission that I'm going to be using it in. Whoa. Do we get something even better, or are you just hobbling yourself? Uh, I think it's a matter of preference on the two planes, because uh, this is relatively equal with another plane that we'll get later. The main reason I don't use it for the missions until we get that plane, uh, because we have other planes that I need to show. Even though I don't yeah. even need to show them. Well, not after unlocking this beauty. And variety is the spice of life. Also, there are some missions that they're so simple that you can afford to use a worse plane or a plane that has no use otherwise. And this is one of those missions. It's a stealth mission where we only have to destroy a few ground targets. And so this one is pretty much perfect for... Uh, not that one. Yeah, that one. Because otherwise, this is like... A piece of cardboard. It's got a pulse laser, though. That's cool. Yeah, laser technology. New work's all about that. You can fly, like, over the terrain. Yeah, just over the coastline there, if you want to. And get a slightly more direct approach. But then you have way less room to move, because we need to stay under 1,300 uh, units of height. So I just fly along the outside here, which also lets us go at Mark IV. Oh, this one goes at Mark IV as well. So I guess there are three that uh, can go at Mark IV. It goes so fast that it's like actually seems like it's going to break up. Yeah, the, the view seems to be uh, shaking pretty nastily. Hmm. I love it. If I was, uh, if I had thought ahead enough, I would have loved, I would have loved to treat this mission as just like staying at top speed at all times and just doing a bunch of quick uh, bombing runs, but with missiles. Instead, I like get this far and then I hit the brakes. Oh yeah. Oh. Ah, uh, we've been cleared to engage. It's fine. Oh, okay, so all you had to do is just get here. Yeah, because they have radar dishes, but who cares if by the time we've destroyed them, or by the time the, the, their jets scramble, we've destroyed them. If we go above the mark, uh, like some more planes spawn, but I don't think it actually discounts you from the A rank. Oh. Because the A rank is destroying eight targets in total, I believe. And yeah, I couldn't find any definitive answer on whether getting spotted would take that away from you. Warning. And those those planes out Warning. there are just like hanging out. They do not even realize what's going on. And just like that, we're going to zip out of here. Oh, they'll never know we were here. What a weird looking plane. Seriously, that little little cod piece under it just <laughs> so off-putting. This is a much better landing angle than I've been given in other landings. Like it's a pretty reasonable, it's not super extreme. I'm pretty sure this one goes badly though. 
Like, I don't remember having a good land, a good first pass landing, aside from the first time I did it. But I don't remember exactly what goes wrong in this. Um. Oh, right, I remember. Oh, no! <laughs> Bummer! Yeah, I crashed into, like, literally one triangle. Oh, man, that's, that's how they get you, those triangles. <laughs> and the day was saved. Now let's get the plane that is objectively better than the 102 and the 101. And is the only... The only uh, Delphinus uh, model that is like worth using in a general mission. So I'm pretty sure we're going to use it right now. Oh good, I can't wait to see, uh, see these lasers in action. And now we get to protect uh, the United Nations chairperson, or the United Nations chairperson, I believe, from Ouroboros, despite killing the Ouroboros leader and destroying, like, their headquarters. I guess they're still kicking around. Yeah, you've just turned them into insurgents now. Insurgents with expensive planes. Uh, but I mean, yeah. hey, blowing up the Death Star didn't destroy the Empire, it just created the First Order, but we didn't know that until 10, 20 years later. So I guess this makes sense. Yeah, it's like the only one of the Delphinus uh, planes that is like stable enough for regular combat. I mean, look at all that attack. Yeah, I think it's like the Delphinus 3, the Su-40, uh, Su-40, Su-43, um, and the, the R-211, the Orcanus. I believe those three are considered the super planes or where the super planes begin in this game. But I consider it starting from like the Su-43. I don't consider the Delphinus 3 and uh, and Orcanus to count, only because of what comes later. This is still a really good plane. I think it's like better. So the plane, this one, and the plane that I use in the next mission, I'm pretty sure they would have been much better suited if I had swapped them around. Because this is a lot of. There's like a little bit of air to wear. But it's a lot of air to ground, and the 211, I believe, does better at air to ground. So I'm using both of them in uh, missions that aren't the best suited to them. Take it back, I'm not really loving these lasers. I mean, guns are, are never optimal, but I don't know, these just feel a little bit weedy compared to the guns. Yeah, it kind of feels like the, the Needler in Halo. It's like, it looks kind of cool, but it just doesn't seem like it's ever doing anything. Yeah, I mean, at least with the Needler, you get kind of that, that satisfying pop when all the, all the needles go off. This one's just like... You're just shooting tiny graphics. <laughs> yeah, it's pew, 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 pew. It's like uh, you've we'll got a some, gun we'll shooting get, ping pong We'll get pong some balls. better lasers, though, though, later. Oh, good. Sorry, you, you, sit, you go ahead. Oh, I apologize. It, uh, it, it just, it really feels like you're shooting a bunch of ping pong balls out of the front. Yeah, but we'll, we'll get better lasers. You know, Beach like, balls. eventually. Oh, imagine spring break if you could just like fire some beach balls out of a gun. Man, imagine any given day. I already am. <laughs> just storms of beach balls.
I still don't know if uh, there's any pressure to like keep planes away from your friendly unit over there. I want to say like the only time that's actually been an issue was in the early game when there was a uh, high flying mission. It was like, hey, protect, protect this civilian plane, and the planes that you were fighting would actively try to get towards there, and you would be failed if you didn't stop it in time. Oh, gotcha, yeah. This mission in the Japanese version was... Oh, what was it? It was you... Uh, oh, it was when you were a part of Ouroboros and you had to pick up... Um, what's her name? Oh, I think it was Nagase. Um, and she was just hanging out and you needed to pick her up because she was the only person who could uh, fly a particular plane. And so now that she's been picked up, it's like, well, protect her while we get her away. Oh, man, it, it seems like, uh, I mean, Ace Combat plots have never been brilliant, <laughs> but the the lack of one. Sorry, really I'm just gonna have to like... hang up on you right now. <laughs> I know it's a contentious opinion, but like. But, but you know you know what I mean it's 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 one of those things where it's like um, you know the the lack of a plot really seems to to hurt this game more than anything else yeah it does and it's one of those things where I'm like okay here are these cutscenes that have no dialogue because all the dialogue was part of the story that's been cut out and also was all in Japanese so instead we just have voiceless cutscenes that last for about five seconds and mean nothing and, also, and then during the game we have like no radio chatter there are no cutscenes before and after the game there's absolutely none of it so it's just whatever they could tack onto it afterwards like the localization team I'll give them credit they did what they could where they looked at the entire game and were like okay what can be used completely removed from context oh it is shooting at the plane stop that Let's go, little missiles. Okay, so st stuff like that, uh, where it seemed like the missiles kind of took off for a little They sort of, you know how the red shell in Mario Kart 64 would behave, where it would kind of like jerk around a bit before zooming in on someone? Right. Yeah, they kind of look like they act like that. They don't just go straight ahead. It seems like they curve a little bit and then they find their path. Maybe that's the specific angle that Loon's been talking about. Because it very much seemed like it corrected itself immediately, and then they all just converged on the perfect oh, I spot. I suppose it makes sense if the missiles have some kind of a, a turning radius to them. You want to lead at a, you know, a correct angle so that they can actually track. Right, that's what I always was figuring. Like, okay, I'll try to lead them a little bit. I was always bad at it, but I'm in the final mission where like I couldn't hit them with missiles at all. I figured, okay, I'll, I need to be leading them a little bit, but every single time it's just you try to lead them and they turn the other way, and then the missiles are just not able to do anything. Right, yeah, because they're too far away to actually get along. These two missions, so in the same way that uh, the two, those first two missions before, those two daytime missions where it's just destroy a lot of planes seem very similar and mm -hmm. if you were just looking at like footage or stills from it they would seem really similar or like they would seem like the same mission even uh, same can be said for that last mission and this mission which we're going to take the Orcanus for since mobility what's that who needs anything like that it's not the worst uh mobile most mobility we've had on a plane but it, it certainly is not, like, good. Um, yeah, aside from the, aside from the color palette being a lot more blue and a lot less green, 
these basically seem like the same missions. Well, okay, it's nighttime again, immediately after the last nighttime mission, and I've got to destroy more planes. And it's more like fighting Ouroboros. Well, I mean, if, if you don't like fighting a bunch of planes, what, what the heck are you doing playing Ace Combat? That's fair. And again, I feel like it's highlighted because you go from one mission straight to the next with no, uh, with no story to break it up. And it seems, and uh, it's pretty common for each mission in an Ace Combat game to have something new to it, something different. And these two, same as those other two daytime ones, seem like they don't because they're pretty straight shot. Uh, the intro the hooks to them in the original version were all story related not necessarily gameplay related that's why it's uh, tricky to about to tricky to like stand out for them too much yeah that's that's a good point this one is actually pretty short though it's like only like four minutes I think three or four minutes because it's like we're gonna destroy all of these planes and that's Pretty much it. So, is, uh, any other thoughts on what XFA thirty six A? What the what the call, the call sign for that would be? Oh yeah, that's right. I've been I've been thinking about it a little bit. Um, I, uh, let's see, in terms of silly names, uh, the, the Honey Bun? No, uh, I think okay. I'm gonna use that for something else, probably. Yep, perfect, good, it's, it's yours. Use it, <laughs> use it with my blessing. Um, the, the Lawn Dart? Lawn Dart actually sounds cool. Oh, no, yeah, sorry, that's... Dart, no, sorry, no, Dart sounds cool, you're right, Lawn Dart sounds dumb. Lawn dart really just sounds like it's something that you'd throw at your younger brother. Um, the Nerf air gun. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Um, all right. What about uh, what about the pillowcase? That that seems like a good call sign for a plane. It'd be that would be. I feel like the pillowcase would be the signature move of. Uh, uh, um, God, what's his actual name? Is it Mr. Sand... It's not Mr. Sandman, it's Mr. Dream. That right. Punch Out. Mr. Yep. Dreamland. The, not Mike Tyson. Oh, right. We have to destroy this gunship. I forgot. Oh, boy. So, so this was... This was, uh... Then Namco, now, uh... Project Aces. Sort of testing the waters on, like, okay, what kind of boss battles can we do? Oh, what if we had, like, a big gunship? So... This is the second time we fight it in the game because they overused it in the Japanese version and they overused it in this one. And it's it's just like a missile launcher and several guns that can't be destroyed. You just keep blowing up a few targets on it and then the whole thing goes down. So it's it's not especially complicated, not compared to any of the Golden Trilogy planes or anything from 6 and probably anything from 7. Uh, but it was the sign of them going like, okay, what? We don't need to be... We already weren't taking this especially seriously, so how much further can we push it? Yeah, I mean, I suppose it's, it's tough to do a, you know, a big kind of set-piece boss fight that's not uh, an enemy ace, for instance. Yeah. And where like the real t the real difficulty is like the real difficulty is like okay they move really quickly so you have yeah. to just it's hard to get behind them to get a lock on them. To be continued for some reason that's not true. Well okay fine man I'll enjoy this cliffhanger. <laughs> why would it put that out there? Because like it it does say that uh, when it's going to like immediately launch into the next mission, but it doesn't launch into the next mission. We get to like pick our plane and like stop and save and quit maybe there was some plot thing I guess that was again another pretty important plot mission in the original 
In this one, it's just like a Zeppelin. Yeah. So the actual name was The Game. The Game? Oh. Man, even I couldn't approach that. <laughs> no. Well, you win, Electrosphere. I could not out-stupid your plane naming.